Fellas, 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 how are we doing on this fine Friday morning? Caleb. I'm relaxing, G. I'm robed up. You know what? I'm ready to take things easy for a day herf. Day herf. Morning herf. The morning herf. We have a special guest in the studio with us today. Uh, it's our good friend Tommy and sponsor of the show from Nickel City Cigars. What's up, dude? Good morning. Good morning. And fucking good morning. Not a whole lot is up right now. Just, you know, waking up in the morning, get a little coffee, get a little cigar, look at sexy, sexy Chandler. That's all right, man. Look at this robe. He's, at a, he's a good looking guy. He, he is a good looking guy. Just a, the right amount of like shin calf is showing out of that oh, robe oh, right don't, now. Don't yeah. let him fool you. He like made sure he shaved his thigh hair for you. I did shave uh-huh. my thigh hair. Good job, Gio. <laughs> yeah. Put so, your fucking phone down. Sorry, I was Jesus uploading fucking stuff Christ. to the... <laughs> we just talked about this. The guy can't stay off his phone. Addicted. He can't. Sending nudes. It, it's insane. Sending it's insanity. Nudes, you know? Sorry, just promoting stuff. The best part of having Tommy on is I don't have to read the ad for the sponsor of the show. Tommy, I'm going to give you this minute. Go ahead, plug the fucking shop, bro. I love it. I love that I don't have to do it. I get to light my cigar instead. We're going to make this one as simple as possible. Um, you've heard Jerry, Geo, and sometimes Chandler, a.k.a. Uh, Caleb. I sometimes forget his real name. <laughs> you've heard them say it time and time again. This show is sponsored in part by Nickel City Cigars, located at 284 Franklin Street, downtown Buffalo, New York. I wish I could tell you it's sunny. It's not. It's gray skies nine months out of the year. We get some good weather, but nevertheless, come on down. If you're not in Buffalo, New York, you can hit up NickelCityCigars.com for all your boutique Allocated cigar needs, specializing in Tatuaje, Crown Heads, of course, which is what we're smoking today, Roma Craft Tobacco, Room 101, Artista, Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, Pastani, Cigars, Fable, Guaymaro, FQ, and all of your other boutique type needs. We've got some special stuff that we'll talk about that's on the horizon, some new additions to the humidor coming soon. Join us at NickelCityCigars.com, and you can use discount code DTH20 for down to herf 20. That's what that stands for, that DTH, because <laughs> we're down to, and we want to fucking herf. So use that code DTH20, and uh, who knows? I am always looking at that code, and if I see somebody use that code, I always put extra in. So please use the code. There are some restrictions. It doesn't work on our clubs. It doesn't work on our memberships, and it doesn't work on some of the LE stuff. But it does work on pretty much 99% of everything that's on there. So use it. Look for some extra stuff in your bag. Send me a message. Send me a little love letter in the note section. And thank you, <laughs> as always, for supporting Nickel City Cigars. That well, was lovely. Well, guys, can we just like clip that and then play that at the beginning? Like, Tommy, you win. <laughs> that is how you do a fucking ad read right there. That's Listen, how you do it. That was a fucking ad I read. I got to be honest. I loved it. Yeah. Now, I feel like I do pretty well myself. Just throwing it out. They are great. I mean, others have tried, and you have succeeded where they have failed, my friend. Appreciate that, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah. Dude, fellas, what are we What are we getting into, man? Obviously, I want to get into what we're drinking. I want to get into what we're smoking first. Uh, Tommy, what are we smoking today, man? You brought us a little treat, and I, I have no idea what this is. So, We are smoking the Crown Heads La Imperiosa, um, the four-pack sampler. This particular sampler uh, box, um, which you'll see some of the imagery of, I'm not sure. It's not in the shot, is it? No, uh, no. I, I mean, it can could, you shoot, it, can it you could be. That? Yeah, re- hand me that little thing so I can hold this thing up. So what's unique about this uh, Lampiriosa Crown Heads box is um, it's old as fuck. And four different sizes in there, the initial uh, four uh, Vitolas one special size this is from 2015 and if you know anything about this cigar um dark oscuro habano all nicaraguan um binder filler this cigar is extremely full-bodied it's probably one of the stronger i mean it's lost a little bit because it's eight years old but this is a very strong cigar in their lineup so those that are looking to smoke crown heads um they do a lot of le's crown heads and i'll i'll touch on that in a moment but this cigar is LE, and I'll tell you why. Because in 2014, when the Las Calaveras debuted, right, this is the this is the fucking cigar. 
So in 2015, they came out with this blend specifically, um, again, but rebranded, not Las Calaveras 2014, but La Imperiosa. So there's a reason why everybody loves this cigar, because as most people know, one of the best years for Las Calaveras is the original release, the 2014. 2015 was dope, 2019 as well, um, and then more recently. But So this dark um, Habano, dark Escuro Habano, Made at the uh, with by the Garcia family, my father's cigars, right? Nice. So a little crossover mm-hmm. there. John Huber <clears throat> and that family, you know, very close as well. So that's it, man. It's a really good box. It's old. I felt, you know, pretty much every time I either send something to be smoked on the show or I bring something to myself. This is my second time on here. Um, I try to bring something fun and fancy and, you know, slay some unicorns. And, and in my opinion and many others, this box is 100% OG Unicorn Slayer style. Um, I'm smoking the uh, Corona size, which is boss as a motherfucker. We made sure Chandler got the little guy. It's I really was... funny you say that because <laughs> Caleb actually is the fastest smoker I've ever met in my entire life. That'll be gone in like 15 minutes. Yeah, this won't take long to get down. That's a problem. I mean, I, I'm not. A, I when I first started, you're not. When I, I'm talking about myself, okay. But when I first started smoking. I used to smoke like a fucking racehorse, right? I had I couldn't control my palate whatsoever. I had everybody would be like, uh, coffee, chocolate, leather, little little pepper on the back end, right? And I'd be like, bitch, it all tastes like fucking smoke. <laughs> and it was that cigar like five thousand two hundred and forty two. It just hit me. It was like a light switch. It slowed down. But I was reading a lot <laughs> and I was listening to a lot as I was smoking that exact cigar. So I was developing a muscle memory to certain um, blend types um, or certain leaf um, or varietals. and uh, But I've learned to control it and slow it down. Maybe you'll get there. I don't know. I don't know. How long have you been smoking for, Chandler? Um, you know, maybe a year prior to the start of the show was when I started hanging out with Jerry and Gio in the garage, just kicking it during COVID. Yeah. But really getting into it once we started recording. So almost we're getting to our one-year anniversary. So... About then, I've really been getting into the collecting, the smoking. You and you go. know what? I'm going to slow it down today because it's a chill Friday morning. We always talk about how Caleb has this secret collection of cigars that nobody knows about. He uh-huh. has this he has this like little collection that no one knows. Uh, he's got all this shit put away that he doesn't tell us that he has. Uh, it, it's really fucking... It's weird. He just randomly, one day, I'll be pulling out like an herb that like I was like, Caleb, when did you get an herb? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like where did you get that? <laughs> I love it. When I see him, I buy him. And hey, I give some treats out now and then. You got one when we were watching The Last of Us the other night? Yeah. A little yeah. upcoming preview for an upcoming episode. I literally just watched uh, the more recent episode. Do you want to dive recent. into it a little bit? We could do a little spoiler. The what episode? You think of it? Everyone uh, caught up to, what is it, the sixth episode? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. I just we watched, were all caught up. Uh, Everyone caught all, up. all six episodes in the last, like, uh, week I watched. Oh, you went you went hard at it. Yeah. Style. Um. So I I love I I like the show. I like uh, I I think it's a good show. I don't think it's a great show. There's so much talking. We're six episodes in, and there's been next to no like infected. Really, it's just a lot of talking. It's a lot of talking. So I said this about the show too. I, my idea of this is it's like The Walking Dead, right? It's now, it's not really about, you, you skipped the 20 years where the infected really was the issue. Now the issue is other people. Yeah. You you're know. fighting for territory. You're fighting for, Resources. you know, you, you know, you're trying to reinvent the world per se. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, it's kind of annoying. I think it's a slow show. I think it's very slow. The two main characters barely get shown. Yep. There's always some backstory we have to watch for no reason. Oh yeah, like know. episode five was kind of with Sam and his brother. I felt like it was kind of a waste, especially because they died at the end. But you did see that huge, that huge monster, bloater. the bloater, yeah. and a million little clickers. So it was kind of cool, but you had to wait all the way to the end. So and then the way it ended, oh, it felt like that episode was just useless. So did I? Am I the only one here that's played the games? Yeah, okay. sounds like so. It. I didn't. I'm a Xbox guy. It's right. a PlayStation series. Now that it's past like this initial point of him getting to his brother, it's gonna start adapting like the better parts of the game. Like the last episode, in my opinion, was the best one because you actually got to get into the main characters and like their motivations. Uh, now that uh, Joel is wounded, it goes into like some craziness that's going on. Like, cause this is all they're 
for the most part, pretty faithfully adapting it. They've added a little, like, you know, touches to it here and there. But so far, I think it's a good, just because of what it's adapting. It's obviously a little bit harder to adapt a video game because you're used to just running around, shooting infected, and then waiting for the cutscenes to tell you where to go next. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Most games are like that, no. It's a good show. It's a good show. I feel like it what i even though i don't really necessarily like the speed at which it's going i understand the necessity for it and i think it's it's leaning towards opening up and being something long tenured and it will get better i'm hooked i'm into the show i i don't think i'll stop watching it um and i don't see them discontinuing it after like a season or two only well, three more episodes oh wow period ever? for the no, no for the first yeah. season oh That's yeah no matters. that makes sense yeah that that makes sense so I don't know if they're going to do like Game of Thrones, how they deviated from like the source material, because there's only two games and they're not like they're moving right along through the first game. Like if I were to say like the part that they're at now, it's like midway to like, you know, mostly through like the second third of the game. So it sounds about right where they're at for port. Any super fans here? Like, is there a third game on the horizon? Um, is there more already in the well, works? Well, now that there's a show, there's definitely going to be a third game. Like the the <laughs> studio that makes this like made all like the Uncharted games, things like that. Like it's not. It's I like, haven't owned any console um, or anything since 2009. That sounds that, that sounds, sounds like that, Xbox 360 to me. I'll that tell sounds you, like no, me. I'm a P, I'm a PlayStation. Guy. PlayStation I'll tell you person? what game that the studio made that everyone here. Played Crash Bandicoot. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. I actually never played that. What? <laughs> well, I'm also like much older than you, so like that. We like, got a special birthday coming up. I was, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me finish it. <laughs> we, we, I was, uh, like my addiction to like, uh, part partying. I don't want to, I don't know what uh, the young partying <laughs> that we all phase we all kind of go through, with the exception of Chandler. <clears throat> Um, oh, I went. Wow, he used to I pee went. on the old store. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, the first episode. That was like the peeing grounds that your old abandoned building. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's where we used to that's stop off and take a so piss. Bad. We thought it would just flooded from the rainwater. That was Chandler. <laughs> years of Chandler's piss just coming through. <laughs> Me and all my friends. When it was, what was it? Uh, Buck and Buffalo was right next door. Yeah. So it was like yeah. the country bar where all the girls get shit faced and ride a mechanical bull. That mechanical bull is still there, and there's a company that moved in. It's uh like something something distribution and they like store like building materials in there but the bull's still in there they're like fuck it in case we're on a lunch break or chandler comes around we might need to ride this bull <laughs> i'll hop back on that old thing one of these days yep. <laughs> riding a bike there you go yeah no crash bandicoot i i that i had just stepped away from you know playstation and all that stuff when uh that game came out yeah. At least you know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, I do want to give a shout out to Crownheads, and I want to I want to say something real quick about uh, John Huber, uh, Miguel, and Miguel's been on this show, and Miguel obviously is always at Nickel City Cigars, but and you can find him anywhere. Miguel is one of the l dopest human beings, biggest cigar geeks. You know, he knows about culture and every city and community and. <sighs> What a fucking great human being. But John Huber and his company, Small Batch Style, that's what we specialize in. That's what we love. People further browse when they come in, and we don't carry Rocky Patel or Macanudo, Macanado, Monte Cristo, none of that fucking stuff. I'm not going to insult any of that stuff. They're all good people, good cigars, you know, handmade, uh, sure, maybe at a lo much larger scale and volume and different grade of tobaccos than I, I'm accustomed to, but... Crown Heads is so cool, so great. Um, love the blends. There's a lot of cool stuff. We're doing a pre-order coming up um, for the, the next ideation of the La Creme, um, and uh, those will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. They've got cool stuff on the horizons. We still have some uh, Las Calaveras 2022. Try and get some down to her people, um, fans and followers, before Jerry buys them all because Jerry is good for at least two off the shelf a week. And he's slowly just buying all of them. Uh, there are some left. Um, the big boy is my fan favorite. But shout out to Crown Heads. Keep doing what you're doing. We love you. Um, such good cigars, man. Really good. Should be Dude, I feel uh, you're, you're spot on. I, I bought a box. I don't know if you remember me buying that box of the uh, LC46s. And then I still weekly buy singles. Because that cigar is so phenomenal. 
Yeah. Uh, everything they put out, the Sfumato in C major, incredible. The Azuli Oro was amazing. Oh, yeah. uh, even the, the uh, Four Kicks Limited, the Lancero they did this year. That was a great cigar. Yeah, and I'm not a Lancero. I, it's, it's cliche as it sounds. I'm not a Lancero guy. I'm not a Lancero guy. I, I really struggle with them. It's it's more of a me thing than it, uh, the cigar. But you're right. They're just really good cigars. Um, they had a great 2022, didn't they? They did. Yeah. They, a, a very the mule strong. kick. So there's a cigar. Um, it is the... Uh, La, what is it? It is the... It's going to drive me nuts. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can't be- believe I'm blanking on it. Um, fuck me. Orange Band. Orange Band. Uh, Jericho Hill? No. 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 Orange Band. No. Not, the, not the... And I sell a shit ton of it, and I smoke the it all the time. No, uh, it's, it's a core line. Um, is it the... It's one from the song, right? Whatever. Uh, it'll come to me. It'll church, pop in Something Church? Sure, something Church? Uh, no, no, the no. The Juarez? No. No, that's why. Predates Juarez. all that. Um, oh, man. I'll, I'll, it'll, it'll pop back into my mind. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. sit here for a second, and it'll come into my uh, It'll pop into my head. However, um, Crownhead's core line is so amazing, right? There's just some really good stuff. It's Not, uh, the Luminosa. The Luminosa. There we go. The yeah. little petite Corona. That is one of the best cigars in their portfolio. The flavor content, and specifically that size, just get it and smoke it. Um, I think there's a box and maybe a handful of singles left in stock. I, um, I smoked one. That was like it was a work smoke. Unfortunately, I was really pissed when I had to put it out. That usually happens whenever I get a cigar I like. Every time he's enjoying a cigar, something hot comes out, and we're like, "Fuck!" You're still working over at Denny's. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you get you, line cooks have it rough, man. I mean, those pancakes, man. Right. Something hot coming fresh at you. Yep. Something hot, <laughs> like those calves. <laughs> Yo, can I we got, can we just take just like two minutes to to really dissect? I got baby calves. No, Caleb's outfit right now. Like this guy took the morning show to a whole new level. Hey, okay. Look at this. Top shit. of the morning to you. Gio said he was gonna get him. Gio, oh, here's man. your opportunity. Good, get his ass. Caleb. Why'd you shave your thighs? You know what? I'll tell you what. <laughs> you come to a point in your life where sometimes you look at yourself and you're like, my thighs are so hairy. You just have to trim them. And I got tattoos on my thighs. Got to show them off sometimes. Don't want them covered up by the hair. Bro, I see you at the gym. I don't be seeing you wearing like thigh high shorts or anything. Well, well, that's your time to show them off. If you're going to do it, do it right. Well, I, I'm not necessarily a hoochie daddy kind of short wearing type of guy. Hoochie daddy. But Yo, maybe what? maybe come summertime, I'll be pulling those bad boys out. Like the, the five inch seams. Oh, yeah. Or inseam. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I got to hit the squats a little more. My knees have been aching and creaking. Stop being on them. <laughs> <laughs> set myself up right there for, you know what i you said it i had to just respond. i did uh, set up i got a question okay before we get into what we're drinking can i pour my drink into my other mug yeah sure if you all want. right perfect let's go oh boy oh god yeah caleb brought a special cup for his uh for his his morning coffee <laughs> kind of morning is this shaved thighs tits out mommy milker morning there we go, right here. This is the Double D mug. Okay. The DTH Double D. He should have been smoking a Double D with that. <laughs> oh, man, but look at this thing. It's beautiful and big. And the, what we're drinking is awesome, too, man. Some, yeah, we haven't even, we we haven't even touched coffee. that yet. Yeah. I'll let Tommy some, introduce that. Some might say that that mug's rather robust. <laughs> <laughs> Very busty. Speaking of robust, this, like I said, this drink is really good. Tommy, what, what are we drinking? I, I know you... This is a concoction you made, obviously. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, this is a spirit, um, one of many spirits. So I own Nickel City Cigars, right? But the city of Buffalo is very lucky because um, the business building is is uh, multi building, multi business space in it. Um, I have Nickel City Cigars has the back half of the building. The front half of the building is owned by. Nickel City Club and Nickel City Club is a non-profit city social club it has no true owner it's owned by the members which you guys know so I, I mean I, I understand you're humoring me here by listening to me but this is really more so for the audience mm-hmm. New York is very different 
I'm not going to dredge on. You can go back to previous episodes of any type and hear about New York's, you know, struggles with uh, legislation. And, we uh, did plan on diving into that a little bit today. Oh, okay. Um, so, but Nickel City Club is a nonprofit city social club owned by the members. There are a board of executives, um, and it is a city social club that has its premise in um, cigars and, and the smoking of cigars, and, and that's that. It does have a club bar inside of it where we specialize um, as a group in allocated uh, bourbons, whiskeys, scotches, Irish, Japanese, tequilas, rums, uh, craft beer, uh, all seltzers, all types of fun stuff. And this is Glendalo Double Barrel, and it's a moderately priced barrel. Um, it has a really good color for being Irish, and maybe that's the double barrel in it. Um, it is an under-the-radar Irish, for Irish sure. people can't be dark? Right. I'm just Here <laughs> we go. I'm going to shave oh, your thighs, boy. motherfucker. You're, you know what? You're in timeout. <sighs> so off, tr- oh, so off. Topic. You need to leave. Daddy, chill. Yeah, daddy. <laughs> you need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, we do a variety of different things. We we have tons of non-alcoholic spirits as, or, as well. We have, um, you know, all the craft uh, cane sugar sodas, black cherry cream, orange cream, cream soda, ginger beer, ginger ale, da 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 da. Um, but we also do a lot of espresso, um, as most cigar shops do. Um, we, we do have espresso, do a variety of different types. So what we're drinking right now is the Glendalo double barrel and it's Irish coffee style hybrid with Cuban coffee style. What does that mean? That's a lot. Let's break it down. <laughs> what the fuck yeah. did you just say? I know. Right. So t- what do you th- mean by that? Oh yeah. <laughs> so this 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 has a name. It's just called the NCC Cuban, right? NCC Cuban Irish Irish Cuban. You, when we if somebody asks for it, we'll ask them if they want if they ask for a Cuban coffee. We'll ask them if they want it Irish or not, and that means we're gonna we're gonna morph it into a hybrid between Cuban espresso coffee and um, an Irish coffee. So let's break down this drink. I'm using some different ingredients that I normally do. Normally we shout out Clonakilty. Hopper and Park. Um, we, when we make this drink, we normally use the um, uh, port cask or the double cask um, Clonakilty when we use this. Um, but in this particular case for this episode, I wanted to showcase the Glendalow because it's a little different. Um, and it, I think it's got the right flavor for this. Um, not it's really no- good. Like, I, I am really enjoying this. Yeah, I, this I is delicious. Normally wouldn't go out of my way to have a Irish coffee. I gotta say, I'm not a coffee guy by any means. I don't like warm drinks at all. Very delicious. Yeah. Uh, this is actually the first time I've had coffee with a cigar. Really? Actually, I don't normally yeah, smoke my, in the morning. It bring, yo, doesn't it bring out a lot of flavor? I, yeah. So, I, I, real quick, this summer, I'm going to invite you to the lake house. I, I, I go straight from PCA. As soon as I get back, I do, I do a night of, I get back from Vegas and I do a night of catch up. And then the following morning, I depart right away for the lake house. And I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to give any locations or specifics. And then it's a week at the lake house. So that's my vacation every year is PCA right into that. And obviously the pandemic and all that stuff has been weird. But uh, we make it work. And I'm going to invite you to that for a day and a night. And then you can do breakfast cigars and coffee on the lake because that's there's nothing better than it. That's it. Hopefully, so, I can get my wife on board. She will probably be. Well, you're gonna be all babied up, and yeah, and, she's gonna be. It's yeah. gonna be fresh. She's due the first. PCA is like the following oh, week. Oh shit! Oh yeah, we talked yeah. about this. Yeah. All right, let me let me break down this drink um, in order of how to make it. Um, you can use any uh, <clears throat> espresso machine you'd like at the shop and here at uh, Down to Herf um, headquarters studio. We are using the Nespresso machine, and we're doing it. Just use any double espresso. Um, put a little sugar in the raw down. I you right now. I'm currently using the black walnut bitters. Um, there's a company in St. Petersburg, Florida that produces it. A um, couple drops of that on top of your sugar in the raw. That's down in the bottom of the cup. Then add in immediately to that raw mixture your uh, about an ounce and a half of Irish whiskey, and then hit 
hit that espresso button, let it get going, let it brew, and continuously stir. Froth your cream or your milk. In this particular case, it's whole milk. Um, and then pour over top, give another quick whip. And there you go. You have your Irish Cuban style uh, Nickel City Cigars coffee. And it's heavenly, is it not? It, it Like I said, man, this it's is this really is super good. good. I Like I said, I'm not going out of my way to make Irish coffee. I have to be honest. Right. I'm not going out of my way to make this. And like uh, Gio said, this is also my first time doing coffee and a cigar. Uh, it's hitting just right. Uh, fitting for a morning herf. And just to add to this uh, Glenado, it's uh, the double cask is an American oak bourbon barrel cask, and then with a Spanish oak Oloroso sherry barrel cask as well. So that's where you're getting some good flavor from this Irish whiskey. Hence the double barrel as well. I'm Leave just, it to Caleb. He always he always does his goddamn homework when it comes to this stuff. I'm just happy like maybe him shaving his legs made him pronounce that Spanish word a lot better. He yeah. did roll that nice, didn't he? Yeah, I'm think I did a good, it, our, proud of you. I'm do it again. Do it again. Oloroso. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Can you make eye contact and do it one more time for me? Oloroso. All hit right, me, you fucked up that time. Hit me with a yeah, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> daddy, chill. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought you had the Austin Powers, yeah, daddy. Well, that's oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, baby. Baby. yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I don't like that as much. I feel like that's going to be in the mix. I just wanted to add that since we were talking about the drink. You know, we've got the two barrels, so very excellent. Very excellent. Very nice. And that, that explains the color on it, too. Uh, exactly. Yeah, you know the best part of this drink? Is I didn't have to make it. I had this uh, handsome Irishman. Tis I. Yeah. Uh, the glorified barista uh, the <laughs> down to her studio. That's right. That's right. It makes you feel warm in the morning. You like getting a little little pep in your step. Uh, feels good. Feels great. Um, I was just talking about cutting back on drinking. Yeah, yeah. We, you, you were, and then you were drinking last night. You drank the night before. Some might say you have a problem. Maybe, perhaps. The only problem is you're not drinking enough. That's, I'm not that's drinking enough, was, Caleb. That's the problem. Oh, hey, I, look at you cool. right now, bro. You are a hot fucking mess, dude. He's trying to I'm end chilling. you. I'm chilling. You are chilling right now. You this look comfortable. Is, this is how you take your Fridays off. I had a PTO day. This is how you use it. See, you, you bang off for us for this. Yeah, why not? I got, I got tons of PTO. That's so. right. And you're still over at Staples? Yep, still at Staples. Uh, still legit. working from home, though. <laughs> yeah. Staples his, logistics. His, so yeah. the, le- the left one on his cup is the easy button. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so quick plug real quick. Um, Sunday afternoon, the uh, tickets for the next tasting club, tasting session at Nickel City Club, hosted by Nickel City Cigars, is Saturday march 25th and it is with dolce vita tequila getting spicy out of austin you know mexico pure agave we're doing their five year very expensive um and their collaboration with garrison brothers their anejo uh bonded hundred proof that was uh finished in uh garrison brothers uh whiskey barrels so they're coming through. Um, it's go- I, when I tell you this, the amenities, the the offerings for this one are the poor girls. Ooh, it's it's going to be over the top, awesome, fun, amazing, and also cigar event. Obviously, as we always can join. Tatawai. Ooh, oh, Tat's coming. Can't tell you. Can't tell you anything more than what I just told you. It's just wow. a little plug. Oh shit! Look so at this guy. We, Mark your calendars. We're folks. doing our first Mark tequila tasting with an one of the best companies out there. One of the best cigar brands. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be fun. Um, just the five year pour. Like if you just walked into a bar and asked for a double of the five year pour, two ounces, it's thirty five dollars. The fucking ticket is thirty. Right. Look at that. And you're man. getting a yeah. flight. You're it's the whole nine. They're, everything that always comes with it. Um, you know, tons of raffles, giveaways, music, the whole nine. Dinner. It's it's fun. Um, this one will be limited in terms of tickets that will be available on NickelCityCigars.com. Hit the drop down box. See the event tab. It'll be right there this Sunday afternoon. What Sunday is the date? That is a great question. Well, Here great I question. am going to pull that up right now. Uh, it is the twenty sixth. Yeah. So that uh, the 26th in the afternoon, they will be available on NickelCityCigars.com. Why why are the tickets limited? Normally we sell about 60, 65. Um, we're cutting that almost in half because 
there's a lot of VIPs that are being invited to this that are the tickets are being uh, reserved for them or or purchased by them. So um, that's happening. So when they go on sale, don't wait. Get them. Don't wait until day of. A lot of people wait until like the day before, two days before. They won't be there. They will be sold out. So come come experience it. If you're coming from out of town, it's worth it. Um, hit me up ahead of time. We'll get wings. Uh, we'll we'll smoke. We'll do a little pre party and stuff like that. But uh, let me know. Well, just, you know just, we'll be there. Yeah, we're off. <laughs> just what I need: another whiskey or uh, like another uh, you know spirit event and cigars. I mean, uh, I'm still recovering from fucking whiskey riot the other day. Well, um, what you, an experience you that have was! Been, you all have been invited to. We're doing the next uh, the craft barrel thing over at 500 Pearl um, up on the upper deck terrace. Um, upper at, decker. Yeah, we're doing the. Uh, it's it's very it's, it's a smaller scale of whiskey riot, so it's just like that. But obviously, you know, five hundred pearl, and they go hard, so it's going to be a cool party. Um, and you guys are being recruited as uh, um, volunteer NCC volunteers again. So we did such a good job on our dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> He's bringing us back. the dungeon. <laughs> The fucking sex dungeon was great. Okay, first of all, I'm mad. What us took the a picture? <laughs> what the fuck? I, now, now here's the kicker though. I went out there halfway through Whiskey Riot. The, I'm like, there's no. I texted you when I was leaving. Yes. Yeah, so Caleb texts me. He goes, dude, there's like 50, 60 people inside this dungeon right now, and they're all smoking. And there's no lighters, no cutters, and there's nobody in there. There's just like two uh, of the tower heaters and a yeah. table. With yeah. like two ashtrays, they were That's probably they were. lighting the cigars with the tower heater. Dude, it <laughs> no, I sent ton, I sent um, I sent several out there, but it it People was were probably I, walking I, away with them. Yeah, I gotta were, tell you what happened. Legs. So, Tommy hands me like four or five cutters, right, and like two lighters. Says, "Hey, go put these down on the table out there." I walk out there, I throw the shit down. I shit you not. Ten seconds went. A guy grabbed one in the packaging, threw it in his pocket. I was like, yo, dude, what are you doing, man? That's to cut the cigars. That's not for you. The guy had a travel humidor with him, had his own lighter, had his own nice cutter, <laughs> not one of the plastic shitty ones that were thrown on the table as a community thing, and the guy still took it. I was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? I say right before I got I pissed, dude. Right before I left, I went out there because there's a guy at the stand. He's like, uh, "Is there a place to smoke?" I was like, "Yeah, I'll show you." I was like, <laughs> and I, "Then he started walking him into the dungeon." <laughs> I, was, I was like, "I'm on my way out." Follow me you. to the dungeon. <laughs> Grab your boys. We're going to the rape dungeon. Oh, it was really Jesus. cold and windy out, so the fact that he was oh. wearing like boy shorts, you know, during that and walking guys out to the dungeon is really fucking weird. This is called the Chandler Cave. Follow me. I can show you where it is. Yeah. Hey, that's how you get all the We folks. got cigars down here. That's how you get all the folks. That's how you get everyone in. You draw them in with some nice eye candy. The mug made it creepy, though, is what I'm hearing. Um, yeah, so the dungeon was cool. That's that's the that's the definition of adapting. We all pulled together. We figured it out because let's look at it the other way. There could have been nothing, right, because of that wind and the weather. So we adapted. We made it. Uh, the fact that we had 50 people out there fucking smoking is a testament to the, the volunteer work that everybody put in to make it, pull, to make it happen for Buffalo. So this is what I got to say. We had eight. Uh, eight of us. Eight. None of us are architects. <laughs> well, Architecturally, one, we put together something that was not going to work. Correct. It was not. It was that the so wind was brutal. There's no way. You, Impossible. We even tried to weigh everything down, but I, I, it just that was not going to happen no matter what. No, but now that we now that we have like a, a consensus that the the dungeon or what became known as the cigar cave. Now that we know that the caves or the caverns, uh, the Chandler caverns, caverns of thighs uh, can be utilized. Now we can focus on that next year. Yeah. And I think we really go hard and we get some form of signage that, you know, the dungeon, you know, or the uh, sex Panther. I don't know. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. That is, you could market that. Yeah. It's a cool it. area. Yep. And actually yeah. we could make that a little cooler in there They're because just, we know that all we needed was like, probably like, Eight sheets of plywood, and then it would have prevented or prevented everything. You just put the tarp back up. Over I think that. we should have just threw fucking strobe lights in there and started yeah. pumping the fucking club <laughs> fucking house music. It's just the vortex of wind there, but though, and the the owners of that waterfront. I mean, that's a, a that's a billion dollar fucking piece of land right there. That yeah. property is crazy. 
I mean, shit. So, by the way, folks that don't know what we're talking about, literally this cave dungeon is directly underneath a fucking Ferris wheel. It's underneath. <laughs> so I want you to picture concrete catacomb pillars, and it's a beer garden all walking through there. So there's round tables through there. And you look up, and there's a neon giant Ferris wheel, right? That's like 15, 16, 17 stories tall. And we're building a sex dungeon, a.k.a. a cigar cave underneath this thing to get out of the wind to smoke cigars at a Whiskey Riot Festival here in Buffalo, New York. I just hope next year it's not as windy, so then the, it will always the be. cave will be better. Yeah, this year was the time of year. And, th and that location is a wind tunnel. It's the vortex because of the waterfront and the grain mills there. Even if there's just 10 mile, whatever it is, you have to triple it. So if it's 10 mile per hour winds, it's 30. That day it happened to be 28 mile per hour winds. So we had we were facing winds of up to 50 to 60 plus mile per hour winds in there. So there's no, the year before was actually worse because there were six inches of snow on the ground, ice, and the wind was much worse, and it was cold, cold, like negative 12. Cold. Yeah, the weather wasn't terrible. It was just the wind, like, that was... The sun was out, at least. I yeah, mean, well, it... with the wind, this, this, that Saturday, two Saturdays ago, uh, it was, or that was last Saturday. Wasn't yeah, that was last, that was last Saturday. Yeah. Um, it was, that was uh, six days ago, Tommy. Yeah, well, fuck my <laughs> life. There, there it is. Do you want to work in the cigar industry? You know, your days blend together. Um, it was, uh, it was, with that wind chill, it was 18 degrees out there, if you're wondering. Oof. Prime smoking weather, by the way. If you're going to yeah. smoke outdoors, make sure it's really like 18 degrees out. Perfect. Yeah. My hands, awesome. I shit you not, for like two days, were still like wind burned. Because Tommy, we get there, he says, hey, man, where are your gloves? There is nothing about wearing gloves. I, I just totally underestimated the fact that we are going to work in those Outside. conditions. You're officers. You're supposed to be trained to no, an extent. I, I, I understand, but that, right. uh, maybe that's not what I envisioned. You know what I mean? That That's not... That's not the environment I envision. Yeah, so the being. other group, uh, there's your group chat, and then there's the other group chat to com comprised of the other volunteers. And in that one, I put, don't forget your gloves. And in yours, I didn't, because I didn't think <laughs> I needed to, because, you know. No, 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 no. It's just, you need to say everything. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. And that's that. How you doing over there, bud? You I'm, smoking? I'm you slowing down. Time? I'm going slow. Look at you. You slowing down time? I wish I could, man. Yeah. Time goes by in the So what was your guys' favorite part, though, Whiskey Riot? Because I honestly, there was a pretty good variety there. Like, I, Do you I, notice how two years in a row, Nickel City Cigars booth was the busiest booth? I got to say, man, I, and this is no diss to Nickel City's or the cigar industry in general. Yeah. Whiskey drinkers love cigars. It is crazy. Yeah. yeah, there, there weren't lines to a lot of these cigar booths, yeah, or uh, to to a lot of these whiskey booths. And if they were, there they was were a line deep. to get cigars, though. It was it was really crazy. Tommy yeah. was pushing C for sure. Yeah, he was pushing C. So you want to say what was uh, what was our what was my favorite part of it when it was over? <laughs> because it is, I just not nah, it's nonstop. Non but I feel like it's got to fly by for you at least. It's the, what I always I I, I it's say it's four this. hours. Well, I mean, for us it was like eight. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> we get there so early. So for me, it was it's five hours of nonstop sales. Right, sale, 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 but. The sales are irrelevant because Buffalo, because of the, the laws in this state, is the, the laws have been effective because the cigar culture has been relatively killed in New York uh, and certainly in western New York. And we have a, a generation, maybe two, two and a half, uh, one and a half to two generations of people where this is outright considered taboo and unnormal. Whereas other parts of the country, this is very commonplace, right? So when people see us set up, and especially that we're, they're like, oh, I've never seen this kind of stuff before. Because the only thing that has thrived in this area is the mass produced, you know, Rocky Patel kind of stuff and that, that, those that have real deep pockets, nobody's really invested in the craft allocated boutique side of the industry, the artisanal cigars. So we bring it to the fold, people love it. It's growing, and it's not about the sales that, that day. It's about the engagement, letting people know who we are, where we are, what we do, what our model is, and kind of what the culture is all about. And two years in a row, it's been successful. So when I get the survey and I get asked um, afterwards, will you come back? Do you want to come back? What do you want to see change? I don't want to see anything change. I love it. 
I love the venue too. I know there's some complications on their end, but for us, it's relatively easy. We're in, out, do our thing, set up, showcase, get it going. We just got to improve the the sex dungeon cigar cave thing. My favorite part was probably like getting to meet some of the vendors and getting to try some things that I normally wouldn't try. Like scotches, for instance. I'm not going out of my way to buy. Like if I'm going to a liquor store, right? I'm probably not going to buy a scotch because I know I'm a little hit or miss on scotch. I'm probably going to buy a bourbon. So for me to be able to have the opportunity to try some different things that I normally wouldn't go and do, that was kind of cool for me. The The worst part was like the last 10 minutes knowing we had to still take down all that shit. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, dude, I'm all fucked up. You guys did such a good job. You helped me, honestly. So when I reflected on everything, and, and I have to do it from a business perspective, I've got to go through it all. You guys preemptively going out there and starting to break things down and then coming back through to help um, made it. Last year I had myself and two other people, and one of those other people was a female, and a lot of the stuff is heavy, right? So it, it it was challenging to say the least. Um, you guys made it enjoyable. So we were, I'm pretty sure we laughed the entire time we broke down. Like yeah. we were having a good time. It was it was really fun. Like oh shit. Like, no, it was fun. It was fun. Good people. Good times. Uh, you guys need to send me the picture. Don't isn't does one of you guys have a picture on your phone? I have a picture of uh, me, you, and Gio. Yes, yeah, so in front of the stand. Yes, I, yeah. I need I need that picture. I, I, I got to see that. Yeah. Uh, shout out to uh, Buffalo Bourbon Babe, aka Ray God, um, as I call her, uh, Ray Glover, uh, President Lockhouse Distillery. She took a really good photo of you guys. Like I saw her take the cred on your IG photo. Yeah, yeah. But honestly, that's a really good photo. Chandler, I mean, you should probably get those shoes that I see, like the ones the that lifts. give. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's weird. And, and Gio, maybe wear some. I mean, l we know you're on the roids, but just oh, looser stop. clothes. <laughs> looser clothing, especially like at things where you know you're going to be photographed and stuff. Because sometimes, you know, it just makes guys uncomfortable. His thighs come out. It gets weird. So, yeah. You did calf workouts. I want to bring this up. You did calf workouts during <laughs> construction of said sex cave. Well, I was making sure I was, you know, working on my best feature. He, you should, he's the calf guy. Take a year off because they're looking a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> like they're, I don't, I just take he a year started off. talking about my pants at the end. He's like, dude, don't wear pants like that anymore, bro. Your <laughs> calves are monstrous. Yeah. You, you got to wear some looser fitting pants around the Boot calves. cut. Boot so, cut for Tommy, you, buddy. <laughs> so, Tommy, you, you did bring up Ray, right? Yeah. So she's actually coming on our show next Friday. She should. Yeah, I think she's going to have a good time. So. She's, she is a good time. She's a great time. Um, uh, did you guys, I, I don't know if you've met him yet or not, but as great as Ray is, her boyfriend Pat is, um, he's a gentleman and a scholar. He's a fun human being. He's been getting into cigars uh, more frequently. Um, he's been to, I think, two of our events. Both of them were the ones that Ray, Ray has done at Nickel City Club. Um, but great guy, so um, don't be shy. Invite him, too, if you can. Um, and, uh, yeah, but she's got, she's got a world of knowledge. You know, she's been in the industry for a very long time. Um, she owes me a phone call. So, um, when you, when you have her on the show, make sure you ask her if she, if she called Tommy back and then she might share something with you. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. Right. She's smoking too on the show. So yeah, she said she's going to have a cigar. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, uh, listen, that's what she said. Okay. Fair enough. Get it. She's she's a badass. She's a boss. But you're gonna be able to she you're ask her if ask her if she called back and then ask her if she has any news to share. I think she watches the show. She might actually see this before that. Uh, well maybe. <laughs> she's she's a busy gal, so I'm sure she watches, but uh, you know, is she gonna see this part? Just remember if you don't watch it, you can still listen to it on Apple, Spotify, <laughs> Amazon, all streaming platforms. And all streaming platforms. Buzzsprout. So, just hit up the Buzzsprout. Hit up the Buzzsprout. There's definitely a platform you can listen to us on. For sure. For sure, Ski. But cool. on the topic of New York, I know we did talk a little about New York, right? Dun, dun, dun. New York introduces two, two bills. bills. One is, is They're great. smoking crack. The one. One is great. And one completely cripples the entire industry in brick and mortar. Let me ask you, which one's great and why? I say the 50 cent cap bill. That is... Is significantly less. But do I believe that that's reality? 
No, because why would the state ever say, you know what, we're making all this money right now, you're paying 75%, there's no, no way aren't. we're going to a 50%. No, they aren't. No, they aren't. Okay, so enlighten me on that. So You know more about me. That's why I figured you're a, right. the perfect person so, to talk to. When I entered into the industry, sure. I, I was able to live in the old calculation via the MT-203 form instructions, um, and it equated to essentially 28.5% on Almost wholesale. 29. Right. Yep. And then while we were locked down, Cuomo, locked down, right, during the pandemic, um, which I don't want to touch on because i don't want to offend anybody about the scamdemic sure um however we are on youtube we could get censored for that possibly who knows fuck it it's one word um and it's true so fuck you um (laughs) so while we were locked down cuomo used it as an opportunity to bypass with his emergency pandemic powers and triple our cigar tax literally just by changing the language and he knew what he was doing it was designed to close us down unfortunately these fucking idiots don't realize we're not all that dumb we'll figure it the fuck out we always do um but they're idiots because you're not preventing new yorkers from anything we're triangled by three indian reservations that all have that are tax fucking free um and all do mail order and then everybody ships and buys and online orders from everywhere and we're on a border state with pennsylvania which is zero percent are you kidding me so even if you banned mail order people are literally right on the border and there's indian reservations anywhere everywhere across this state so there's you're not preventing anything whatsoever and don't give me this bullshit about kids and tobaccos premium cigars are not um, and I have an opinion, by the way, of what I would do. I'd scrap them both. Here's what I would do. I'll tell you in a sec. Um, you're not preventing anything. People are going to get their tobacco no matter what. Kids aren't smoking $30 fucking cigars behind the high school. It's bullshit. <laughs> the average age for the individual to f- smoke their first cigar is 27. All the data, all the research, all the studies, everything is beneficial. They're so pro-marijuana, which I don't care about. Do your thing. So pro-marijuana. And marijuana is leaps and bounds more unhealthy for your lungs cardiovascular um and all forms of uh um, uh, and neurologically yeah i'll I'll, I'll tell you what it definitely makes you dumber i don't care what anybody says well i mean i'm just speaking from heart and lungs um that that perspective so cigars are, are are a fraction of damaging in relation to and certainly in moderation to the tune of one a day in terms of cigars um so the bills um Right now, the average, with the 75% wholesale, the average tax on a cigar is about $3.80. Gets tacked on, right? Uh, when you look, start looking at Atabay Byron, Dunbarton, it takes an 18 19 $20 cigar and makes it a $30, $31, $32 dollar cigar. Dunbarton is right there with it pretty much. Um, Dunbarton is supposed to be in the higher teens, and now all of a sudden they're, they're astronomically higher. They're closer to $30. Um, from Waster de Saka, so on and so forth. It's hard, but people love it. It is what it is. We have discount codes down to DTH20 for a reason. Um, help us help you, and we all live together. Um, stop buying from the people that are faceless. I assure you, spend the extra $3 with me, and I will make it worth your while. Buy from them, save $3, buy from me, get free shit. What the fuck? Take the free shit. Give me the $3, please. We need it. Um, So flat tax of 50 cents. Fine. Great. Awesome. Love it. If they go the suicide route, holy Moses. Um, We'll be having a uh, board meeting. And as I mentioned to you guys, uh, a crew will be helped or be asked to show up um, for a particular meeting. Everybody will be handed a presentation packet. Um, A pitch will be made. We will be looking for all hands on deck to um, liquidate um, whatever isn't nailed down so that we can flee the state of New York. So if they push it uh, circa, you know, 80s, Dave Garofalo, two guy style leaving Massachusetts, all they're going to do is and maybe that's what they want is to force us out of the state. But that just hurts consumers because the the state is this is very much a red state. It is not a blue state. Um, well, aside from yeah. Yeah. aside from a couple of major cities, right? Well, this they, is... they, the the governorship was lost. I mean, short of the mail in ballots, it, it was in fact lost. Uh, this is a very much so a red state. People want cigar bars in this state. They're not listening to the constituents. 
um, equality is equality. If, if you want us to align with your, your ideology, align with ours. We want to be able to smoke in peace and harmony. We want to be able to make free independent choices and weigh risk independently for ourselves. Everybody knows that cigars, alcohol, marijuana, all of these things outside of moderation is probably not good for you. So here's my pitch. You ready? Here's what I think. I think we should have a 50 cent because we are buying less tobacco because of these taxes. We are buying at certain certain windows of time because of the frequency to which the taxes are due, which is anything I import in the month of, say, February, for example, is due March 20th. Anything in March is due April 20th. So you don't, we don't even have time to sell it to earn the, ta- the, the tax revenue to pay the state. So it's a it's a it's a long game. You got to move fast in a, um, in certain ex- uh, certain periods, but we do our ordering at the very end of the month, so we get it in at the very beginning of the month, so that we have you know almost sixty days. We have about fifty days to pay the tax, right? We have fifty days to sell it and then pay the tax. So we run lean. You walk into a New York shop that's opened within the last you know ten years, and you're gonna see it runs lean. There aren't vintage boxes from floor to ceiling when there were no taxes and such we can't afford to build that backlog of cigars so what i suggest and if i were part of the nyta which i'm not um i would suggest that we do a flat tax of 50 cents per cigar the state will make much more money in the long run the projections show that to the state um but what they should uh, what they should do like to get that to go through what they should do is make Pull all cigars, pull all cigars out of gas stations, pull them all out of all all the stores, make us dispensaries. We already have the license. We've already gone through the background checks with New York State Tobacco Taxation and Finance. Pull it from the stores. You don't want the kids to have access. You don't want them to see it. Put the tobacco in the tobacco stores. Make us dispensaries for tobacco. Take it out of the stores and put a flat tax in it. Solves everybody's problem. Everybody's happy. Just relax a little bit. Let's work together. We can meet each other's goals. And it's already a, a very niche market. You know, the Clean Air Act did its thing. It did its thing. It worked. But then you look at this ideology about making generational bans like in California. Like, it's it's crazy how far they're willing to go for something that they don't care about or doesn't get them votes. Yeah. And that's essentially what this is. So we actually, I don't know if you saw, we did do our episode on that. What is it? The AB 935 bill? Yeah. California. It, it, it is great. You just, you're going to just, whoever's grandfathered in is grandfathered in. And anyone after that, you're not allowed to smoke tobacco or buy toba- tobacco. It's crazy. And what if you're from like a tobacco family in California? So if you're born after 2007, you just can't smoke? Like, what the fuck? Dude, it's, who the fuck's going to listen to that shit? No one. Off, I mean, no. the, look, at, look at the war right now. The war is on tobacco. The war isn't on any other drugs. Right. You can do whatever the fuck you want, essentially. I'm going to tell you this from a law enforcement perspective. If there's a day that comes that we have to, like, go after people. Like, you got guys who get arrested for, like, really hard, dangerous drugs. Okay? They're out the next day. They're They're out and about. The war on tobacco, it, it, it just, like, I don't, I, I could never foresee myself being one of those people that could just enforce something like that. It, it it's was, unenforceable. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know from law enforcement, right, I have a degree in criminal justice. Um, I, I never got offered any academies, you know, um, in time uh, to, to steer away from healthcare. Um, one came after the other, but um, I was close, right? And... It is sometimes at the officer's discretion as to what to enforce and what not to enforce. Sure, right? of course. There's, can, a, there's always discretion. I cannot see the majority. Uh, I can see a very small percentage actually enforcing a generational tobacco ban. You know, like, what are you doing? Like, how do you, how do you even, how do you even see, source what's that? what's so fucking bonkers about that is, like, the whole argument with marijuana was, oh, it's putting, you know people in jail for a plant what are we gonna so the one of the biggest consumers say for example is menthol cigarettes which is typically low income so on so forth newports menthol newports are we going to fucking arrest people for newports now no absolutely the fuck not like it's just crazy but so this is what we're trying to do now like get out of here Yo, with this. i just our education system, our infrastructure, our our youth, um, our, the mental health. There are so many different elements of of life 
that are subpar in, and I, I'm only going to speak from a, from a local and state level. So many things that are subpar. And this is one of the chief talking points. This is uh, why is this even on the agenda? Well, and it's hypocritical because they all fucking smoke. I think your light just turned off. Yeah, oh, something, yeah. So, something switched. No, yeah. His his ring light. It's just fine, Gio. You're good. Off. You're good. It probably overheated. Oh, I got some advice for uh, those New York State legislators and everyone in the Senate. You guys just need to chill. Just chill. Wear a robe. <laughs> I thought there was more. Just no, no, no. That, 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 was, that, it. that was it. No, no. Do a that, little. That's that Imperiosa Habano hitting right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah my <laughs> no, do a little. Of this sit back, smoke a little, have a titty cup with some uh, <laughs> Irish coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, just chill. You don't need to be up in people's business. Just chill. there's a reason, and I'll I'll say like the on dude. That. Google um, aroma therapy. This is aromatherapy. It's good heart health. We're relaxed. We're having a good time. We're we're safe. There's clearly no children around. Uh, leave us the fuck alone, dude. My whole thing is, I, you see these, and you bring up the youth, right? How many of these kids do you see right now running around, and they all have those vapes? I know you're a vape guy. I know you like to vape once in a while, but yeah, yeah. what I'm saying is, there's kids they can't wake up, and. and the, process doing anything before they take their first hit of a vape i i don't understand that that Listen, shit is crazy i'm I, I some people are going to hate me for saying this and and i okay if there's a i don't know the studies on that kind of stuff i don't know it well I'm it's at, so new well i so i'm gonna but i do agree i see it everywhere everybody vapes it is what it is it's a it's it's part of that culture it, it's a it's a thing, but I do know from being a former cigarette smoker and from vaping and from chewing tobacco at one point in my life and smoking cigars, I'm not immune to tobacco in the in the knowledge. I can tell you that vaping is leaps and bounds uh, better than smoking cigarettes. Cigarettes are terrible, absolutely fucking terrible. Yeah, I saw the shit they throw in it. But I don't know enough about the vapes to say what they are. But I do know from 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 personal experience, from a cardiovascular uh, aspect, you know when I stopped. Smoking cigarettes, I stopped getting sick. I never had like prolonged congestion and mucus, and um, I wasn't winded at particular times. You know, I, I had more endurance, I had more strength. Um, I, you know, my pathways were just a little bit healthier. So I don't vape all the time, but I do. You know, it, it's a it's a good little crutch, and I have the type I use is a little bit older. It's not one of those pre. You can't see what's inside of it. Like I have to put my shit in my shit and i have like next to no nicotine in it it's based mine's basically just an organic water vapor placebo to an extent yeah 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 and like if you're gonna play the health aspect of things like okay with cigarettes then make it so the only thing for a cigarette is wrap and tobacco like not the filter shit like the chemicals the carcinogens yeah like but they won't do that because, you know, the Philip Morris family is a fucking major lobbying group. Yeah. And that New York State bill, just the hint on it, is called S6741A, for those of you guys wondering. Well, which one's the other one? The one that's, uh, the they're, what is the it, 95% ban? tobacco tax, and then there's another one that's 129. 129. Oh, my Lord. That's insane. That's, that you cripple brick and mortar. It's over. Done. Tobacco is done in New York. You go to 129%, it's 75 is already ridiculous. 129, just fucking close up. There's nothing, there's no reason A to be 3% over. 3% tax on T. Yeah, that's all it took back in 1770, well, pre-1776. And look at us, there's, and look at us little bitches right now. But there's no way to fight it. You can't uh, fight it. Well, a large-scale protest. Unless you think there's ways to fight against that. A 3% Listen, tax on tea and they dumped tea in boston harbor yeah they yeah. did but what the fuck are you gonna do there's a lot you could not do. gonna take your fucking uh 30 cigars and dump them into the fucking buffalo river you're right i am not i'm not going to do anything at all i'm gonna leave the state yeah like you, you vote with your wallet and you leave and you leave state you vote with your feet too uh, it's they okay. want you to leave they, they don't, don't want they, you to stay. They don't like us. In they New don't York. like you. They don't like us. They in New want York, you yeah. to leave. Yes, they do. You're absolutely right. That's it. They want you to leave. Root cause. They actually, didn't one politician say if you don't agree with like us, just leave. We don't want you in New York. That, was, well, that, was, that, was that Hol- politician Hol- was our governor. That was Hol- 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 right? Oh, yeah. it was Hol- she said yeah. that too. Right? Yes, we are her disciples. 
um, we are to get vaccinated and get that, myocarditis. Those are quotes, not the yeah. not the myocarditis. But the, yeah. Yeah. if yeah, but, if you don't agree with us, you're not a New Yorker. You yeah. don't hold our values. You can leave. Yeah, just leave. Yeah. That is What's whack. crazy is not like, a good thing to like say. She's like a Western New York woman and. Definitely does not believe half the shit that comes out of her mouth. Hypocrite, hip, absolute hypocrite. She was a huge backer of the NRA. Now she's totally against guns. It's just whatever the agenda is in America. Just part of the swamp, man. That's it, man. Just part of the swamp. We don't usually get too political, but that is the truth, dude. I'm only talking from. I, I'm not talking about any other ideology or any other political talking points. I'm literally talking about tobacco. No, I understand, but I'm I, I'm saying. That she's a hypocrite because oh, of all the things yeah, that no, she's no, no. against were things that she believed in at one point well, because that was the agenda. Show me a politician that hasn't flip flopped on a, a variety of different topics. I mean, I, I don't want to get too deep into this rabbit hole. The last thing I'll say on it is I, I do support a lot of different um, viewpoints in terms of rights of rights to choice, women's rights, so on and so forth. I'm, I'm a huge, huge advocate for that. But I want equality. I want them to support my my interests and my hobbies as well even though they don't support it for themselves like you know i'm not a woman right but i still support you and your rights like why do you have to be so harsh on something you don't want like let's just work together and make us dispensaries and make us private and leave us alone because they don't want to do that they want to divide everybody that doesn't make sense that just makes no sense and of that's course. my that's my piece is but like, let's just end it at that we yeah. like you said we don't want to get too deep into a rabbit hole we're not like out here to push <laughs> political agendas we're out here to smoke cigars have a good time have a good conversation enjoy a nice spirit and then talk about things that we do yeah. enjoy talking yeah. about so other cigar news though i would like to touch on as well like we saw this recently stg bought alec bradley what do you think of that oh uh, um yeah. Kind of, kind of a crazy move, man. 70, second, seventy-two million, seventy-two and a half million. Yeah, so second large purchase in of like six months. A small batch style cigar company in eight months. So it's a pathway. It's 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 not uncommon. I think it's uncommon for the type, but I think they are smart to do so because I've been saying this for two years. And that is, um, if you look at the margins between um, the legacy brands and the boutique brands, the margins of reported earnings over the last decade have been, the boutique allocated small batch has been eating into those margins. And I think they are getting in front of it Mm -hmm. by buying a lot of it um, and some of the stronger ones. Um, I will say this, though. Um, we, this isn't an announcement because I haven't finalized my thinking on this, but if for my company, if when you go, once you go under that umbrella, my ordering stops. So you should know who else they bought. And since that, I haven't placed a single order. Yeah. Yeah. I I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I'll leave it at that. I'm not gonna, I don't want to talk about that in any deeper. Those who can read between the lines will, um, and that's hard because, you know, that's a quarter of my, my shop, you know, imagery and look and style. And there's a relationship beyond, you know, cigars and that and that relationship and that business dealing. And, and sadly, it's got to happen. I don't I've never really been a smoker of Alec Bradley. So good for them. Good. Good sale, guys. Yeah. Make that money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, that I, money. Uh, I met um, Bradley Rubin at uh, PCA. He was a nice kid, man. He's a good kid. Yeah, I went to their, uh, in 2019, I went to their, uh, I was with Tor Campbell of Smoking Stills, and I was invited to their, uh, the Palms Penthouse rooftop um, uh, cigar media party, at P- uh, the last ICP PCR, which is now PCA. And uh, I get to meet the whole crew there and smoke some of their stuff. And uh, obviously, I'm going to, you know, support and photograph and rep their shit during that, that event out of respect. But it was a good time. And I, I, I think it's awesome for them. Good good for you. You got to do what you got to do. Rabbit Air, brought to you in part by Down to Herf Podcast. If you'd like <laughs> to know what's cleaning the space, it's Rabbit Air. <laughs> Hey, send, send us, us a, another, send us another one. one. <laughs> it's it's so weird because when I pull up, obviously everyone can see everything I do on my computer while everyone, like you know, we're in the studio. We're but you got to turn that bitch on a little bit. Yeah, these are some smoky cigars. Yeah, well, they, we got they four are going. Billowing. So let's talk about the cigar. Who's enjoying? Oh, I'm, I'm already finished. I, I'm already I told finished. you was Caleb was gonna fucking well, fly had, through he his. Had the, he had yeah. the stubby. He had the nub. Had the, the uh, 
but grams of tobacco is probably equal to what I had, and I'm I'm on my final third right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting right near you there. So Gio and I, um, for the La Imperiosa, if those who don't know, it has a very beautiful baby blue, and it has a crown on it. So Gio and I used the Calibre V cutter, and we did the King's cut on ours, double V. And it is billowing smoke for a cigar that is these particular cigars are eight years old. They are smoking phenomenally. If you're not familiar with Oscuro Habano, it is a very Nicaraguan. It is a very uh, strong, full-bodied, full-flavored, relatively high Nick cigar. A lot of good tasting notes on this. Um, If you're not comfortable with a a smoke this full-bodied, those tasting notes might be lost on you. The Irish is muddling this a little bit um the coffee and that it pairs well it's great i i pounded the drink but really good cigar i love a corona size i would smoke I, if i had to rate this right now um i'm going a 91 91. I'm going to add that to our mean score when we do this. 91. 91. Oh, yeah. dude, I didn't even start mine. 91. Mine's done, but I'm going to wait. Um, you know, we got another segment coming up, too, so I'm yeah. going to wait. But I'm going to put uh, Tommy's rating in there as part of our overall score yeah. for everyone. We've been getting more organized and actually, like, saving all the ratings, so push it up there and see kind of what uh, study is out at the end of the year. Uh, what it, what's your scale? How are you? Are you are you doing the the, the hundred scale? Yep. Uh, well, we yeah. do it out of fifty, but obviously we times everything by two, and we do appearance, burn, construction, draw, and enjoyment, the A B C D E's of cigar ratings. All right, hit me, hit me, take it from the top. Give me the first one. All right, you want me to st- we'll start off the rating before we get into the last segment? Yeah, oh, you yeah. can go ahead. You you finish yours anyway, Caleb. That'll give me a chance to do mine. Perfect. So appearance, I gave it an eight. I love the blue, the gold, the crown. Um, then with the age on this, eight years, and the box, eight for an appearance. Burn gave it a nine. I had no issues. Uh, didn't even touch it up once. Maybe, maybe once in the beginning, but construction nine. Uh, it held up for eight years age. Great. I did the V cut. I didn't do the crown like you guys. Uh, gave it a nine. Had solid draws all the way through. And as an overall enjoyment, and would I smoke this again? Because I've already smoked one of these before. When it helped Jerry do his back deck, uh, gave it a nine as well. So overall, got an eighty-eight for me. Cool. So I'm not, I'm pretty close to you right there. All right. I mean, I'd like to try the the bigger size, but hey, no complaints here. This is a great morning cigar to go with the Irish coffee. This is, yeah, in my point of view, um, with that thinking, um, this is definitely not a morning cigar. Oh, it feels for, like no, one. <laughs> for me in any way, shape, or form, because whatever I would smoke, whatever I smoke after this is gonna be a little bit lost because this is a, it's a, this a this a fat bottom. Right here, that's uh, just billowing. This this uh, cigar is one of those ones that kind of melts you into a chair. Yeah. Oh, I like starting off my morning with this one. <laughs> I also had yeah. notes, um, very chocolatey smell, uh, and a very distinct dark chocolate smell. Like a, it, almost when you cut into it, it, looks like a very dark chocolate bar that you would. That's eat. the Oscuro uh, wrapper. Yeah, I like that chocolatiness, and um, again, just the very smoky stick, and I don't mind a smoky stick at all. But yeah, 88 and a 91 so far, so pretty high ratings. Right I'll now. get into mine. I'm, uh, I'm coming into my final third, and I really i am feeling like this is where I'm going to get punched in the mouth. I think this final third is going to have a lot of body to it. Yeah. Um, so the appearance, I gave it an 8. Really cool band. I like the dark wrapper on it. Uh, almost like a dark coffee bean uh, look to it. Were you smoking the Toro out of there? Uh, it was the the biggest one, I think. Yeah, I, I think it's a, it's, it's it's not knowing exactly. It looks like a fifty ring gauge to me. That's definitely not a fifty two. I I think it's a fifty. Yeah, I don't. It could be a robusto. Six plus. and a half by fifty, something yeah. like that. Um, the burn I gave it a nine. No issues at all. Perfect burn line. Uh, the construction of the cigar. I mean, the thing eight years old held up like a like a tank, man. Things built great. Really good cigar. The uh the draw perfect. No, no tightness, no, no uh, looseness to it. Uh, just, just what you're looking for if you're looking for a cigar to enjoy. Which brings my overall enjoyment to a nine, bringing me to a 44. Double that up to an 88. 88. All right, 88s. 88s are great. 88s are great. Are great. The last t- here. Geo, always the last one. <laughs> it's funny because he's always on his fucking cell phone, but he's never doing the review. 
barely on my phone at all. Give me a hard time for nothing here until it's game time to total it up here. Mm-hmm. Time appearance, to bust, busting balls over here. All right. Appearance, I actually gave this an 8.5. I like the little sampler box. It's very just like unique. I've only really seen crown heads do these type of style things. I'm sure there's other companies that do it, but maybe they do them just, in the last cal every year too. Yeah. I know Crown Heads does it with a lot of their line. Not they... cabinet style, though. They do the slide boxes mm-hmm. for yeah. those. But these ones are cool. And it's just nice because it's got like that little extra piece of cedar or whatever that is to keep it you know, in organization for the various Vitolas. Uh, I like the wrapper, traditional, just like that nice baby blue. And on top of that, that gold accent with the crown really highlights the brand there. The overall appearance of the cigar itself, you know really really aged well you could just tell by it uh that's where it got to my 8.5 for me definitely like as far as the box itself like there's not any crazy designs on it so it's not like over the top or anything like that burn i gave it an eight i touched it up occasionally nothing that was annoying or anything like that uh i think i did it like three or four times throughout uh construction i gave this thing a 9.5 if i didn't ash it i think i'd still have an ash going for it this thing held up beautifully, which that's just a mark of fine craftsmanship, in my opinion. Especially when you get a nice rolled cigar. This thing probably could still have the ash from when it started here. I don't remember which size I had. Um, Yours was kind of like the uh, Robusto Plus. Um, yeah. it was, it's like uh, a fatter Robusto. Yeah. A yeah, um, little bit longer. Um, so what'd you get? What's your overall score? Uh, draw, I gave it a 9, and then the enjoyment, I gave it a 9.5. In addition, I like that Irish coffee we paired with it. So my total score was a 44.5. That came to an 89. Look at you. So yeah. I'm in a 91. Um, I'm just I'm going to stay at my 91, however you want to sort that out. But I want to talk about the, the presentation. Cool concept. Um, knowing that the hype around this... Um, you know the gold embossment, the inside, the the um, the etching, and the construction of the cabinet, the the grain of cedar. It's not cheap, um, so packaging is really good. The bands are great, beautiful, cool design. The tobaccos. That's why we. The tobaccos lead to everything. It leads to construction. It leads to appearance. It leads to draw. It leads to flavor, taste. You know, and overall enjoyment. And that is a testament to uh, one John Huber. What right? Like what he what he desires. What he wants. What he envisions. Um, the sizes have the Vitolas have a lot to do with the enjoyment. Um, I trust him. He's he's a fucking madman genius for a reason. Um, and the trust he had to have the Garcia at my father's cigar factory make this cigar and use, utilize their tobaccos. For those that don't know, uh, my father's cigars and Tatuaje cigars, Atelier, surrogates, all really clean tobacco. Um, one of the most efficient factories um, around. Good people, good tobaccos. Good quality control all equates to good scores such as an 88, 89, 90, 91. So heavily buy, highly recommend. They are available at Nickel City Cigars, Crown Heads, La Imperiosa, DTH20 will get you 20% off. Use it, remember, because I'm looking, and you will get bonuses. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I don't think I've ever had a bad cigar that was made out of my father's factory. Like I I mean, you smoked certainly more than I have. Well, there aren't bad cigars, you know, there's just cigars that might not be for you, right? So there's yeah. a difference between the two, but they don't they do not do the volume of business and they don't produce for people um, and they don't get the scores they do and they don't get the accolades they do if they were making bad cigars. Are there I, a dud in every box? Sure, maybe, but that's it's a handmade product. But awesome tobacco, couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, I'll rephrase it. I guess I should say a poorly constructed cigar. Like yep. usually the tobacco is going to be yeah, the, the best of the best. Yeah. Well, on projects like this, so so some information about how that factory works to an extent is all based on relationships, business that has been done, um, agreements, so on and so forth. So um, although I don't I can't say specifically this was the case for this cigar, I, I'd imagine it, it, it be the case. Um, and that is that John Huber went to uh, the Garcia family and was um, asking or inquiring about schedules for rollers and they will put 
certain rollers on certain projects and there's a, a schedule um this tobacco was definitely hand selected it was definitely some premium tobacco that were, was utilized and then it was probably worked by some of the the better tables at the factory and it was put on a schedule and it was done so you could end up with some of the the lower quality um skews um to an extent lower cost lower grade tobacco that are made by some of the more novice rollers in that factory but this obviously is very evident that some of the best rollers in that factory some of the top or chief tables worked on this project awesome man hey well as always we appreciate you bringing some cool shit for us to to smoke and drink we do have one little quick segment we want to get into. Oh, overall score of 89 for the four of us. 89, just add, just not bad. Add, just to add that before we get into the next the one. Shitter's full, Caleb. Very, shitter's full. <laughs> very I helped, fair. I helped melt some of, the, uh, some of the ice out there. Wait, how are you back into that cup? What happened here? Oh, I just put some more of the... Uh, I just put some more of this into this cup. It's Fuck got a little, it, it is a day off. PTO. <laughs> it's got it's got a little bit of froth in there from the Irish coffee, but you know what? It's mixing good, man. There you go. I'm not Dude, complain. you are like the goofiest guy I've ever met. <laughs> that's, but that's that being said, Caleb, lead us right into our next segment, buddy, because I I, uh, I was looking forward to just breaking some of this down because this, right. this shit's funny. We have three little three little quick stories, and we're going to wrap it up. All right, hit that button. we gotta it got to have our intro music. All right, man. This is Patrol Gone Wild. Patrol gone wild. We're doing it big. All right. To start things off, I have creepy cookie monster terrorizing town. Cops warn. Steer clear. <laughs> <laughs> this is from a Santa Cruz wharf in California. So, as you can tell, uh, we got a picture up here, right, Jerry? Uh, yeah, I took it down already, okay. but yeah, it was up there. Yeah. So, we have a local dressed as cookie monster going down the wharf in Santa Cruz yelling obscenities at locals and taunting them as well as trying to rob them of money for pictures taking with their children um the police are advising everyone to stay away from this cookie monster and do not take a picture with him um kind of he's almost done this before they're assuming it's the same guy who was caught in times square dressed as elmo who was also harassing people in times square the Sesame pictures. Street Bandit. <laughs> so it's really funny you 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 touch on the same like it could possibly be the same guy because somebody was telling me you know how like in Las Vegas Tommy when you're there and you see all the guys <laughs> dressed in all the weird costumes and they're like taking pictures with kids and shit. Oh yeah. Somebody pointed this out to me. They were like, those are probably legitimate registered sex offenders and shit that like that's what they do for money and those could are the ones that are taking pictures with your kids. Could be. And uh, also to note the. Uh, they named the suspect in the Cookie Monster costume, and his name is Adam Sandler, age 59. No relationship to the Adam Sandler that, you, that we all know and love. But it's just funny that it's the same name. All right, dude. That's a, that's a funny one. <laughs> so if you're out there in California, Santa Cruz, stay away from Cookie Monster. So they caught the Cookie Mo- Monster Bandit. They know it's Adam Sandler, not the <laughs> real Adam Sandler? Allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. All right. So, alias is let me ask you, are you getting your picture taken with Cookie Monster? You know what? I've been to New York City and Times Square, and I stay clear away from all those freaks in the costumes. They probably are sex offenders. I'm staying <laughs> away from them. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. So here's my story. I got it's a armed robber stayed at the crime scene to eat victims' fried chicken, prosecutors say. <laughs> so this is out of Chicago. This is a great one. Uh a Chicago man is facing a bucket of felony charges after allegedly <laughs> robbing a man at gunpoint and then staying at the scene to eat the victim's takeout fried chicken. Chicago police arrived at the robbery scene within minutes and allegedly found James Taylor, 20, still there enjoying the victim's delicious fried chicken. Jesus, what is this, celebrity name criminal thing? <laughs> yeah, right. Officials said the victim, 35, parked in front of his home in the 4500 block of South Calumet around 1.30 a.m. Saturday and started to head toward his residence with a piping hot yard bird. So, there you go. Imagine that. You show up to the scene, the guy robs you at gunpoint, and then not only that, fucking eats your fucking dinner too. <laughs> I had injury to insult right there. Yeah, it fucking yeah, sucks, man. Terrible terrible day for the victim. Yeah, man. I, I, I feel like there's just no winning in that I situation. I hope the restaurant <laughs> gave him another meal. I highly doubt it. It's, it's Chicago. It's Chicago, yeah. Lori Lightfoot. Ugh. Not a fan. Probably charge them double. Double. Gio, right. what you got, buddy? All right. It doesn't say where this was, but I, I appreciated it. So 
there was a possession of a controlled substance arrest at 7 p.m. on September 25th in the 200 block of Anchor Avenue. Officers conducted a traffic stop and arrested the driver for possession of cocaine. The driver admitted he had recently used cocaine to celebrate the completion of a drug rehab program. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's okay. That. He went in for crack, so he downgraded to cocaine. Oh, okay. Right. So he's like there you go. halfway there. Yeah, he's, he's crack been, cocaine. He's only using cocaine, next not time, crack. Yeah. Next time he gets arrested, it'll be for weed. All right. Yeah. I believe that. Steps in the right direction. We appreciate that. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of those stories, Tommy? What was your favorite one? Uh, the chicken. You like the chicken? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. That's that's a that's a I don't give a fuck type of attitude. And my man robbed him at gunpoint. Yeah. And then ate his food, and stayed there to eat it. Yeah. No fear. No fear of the police. None. Just looking for a bite. I guess he'll probably. It's it's Chicago. He'll be released the next day. That's Chirac, man. I'm more. Um, into the takeout so if that were me i probably would have <laughs> taken the food to go um but what are you gonna do you know word of advice to all you criminals if you're gonna rob someone and take the food don't stay there and eat it flee take yeah. it to go like tommy says take it to go. He, he missed one part of the dine and dash he didn't dash <laughs> yeah exactly he missed the dash on that yeah you know Love why it. did he rob that one guy in particular couldn't he have just took food from the whole restaurant Instead of that one, it person? didn't really say if he actually okay. robbed the guy. Did he rob him for the food? It didn't really specify. It would suck if he took his wallet and then took his food too, or like it took his cash and then his food. Yeah. Poor All right. Guy. I want chicken now. That's what I'm saying, for dude. I'm, I'm hungry. If anybody's wondering, I'm hungry as fuck right now. KFC. But listen, guys. That being said, Caleb, any closing notes to the episode? Hey, it was a pleasure having you on, Tommy. Guys, make sure you uh, you know check out his shop and use that DTH20 in-store or online. Why pay full price when you've got a discount available to you? True story. True story. Make sure you guys are checking out the YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed. We have a really cool thing coming up that you guys are not going to want to miss. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure you guys are following us at uh, Down to Herf Podcast on Instagram. Make sure you guys are following Nickel City Cigars and Nickel City Club on Instagram as well. And, again, Tommy, thanks for coming on. Thanks for hanging out with us for a couple hours, man. Pleasure. Love it. Get ready for that giveaway. All right. That being said. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.